Welcome back everybody to the channel. As always, this is Raul Alejandro Mendoza or the Nerd Chicano. It doesn't really matter. It's all good here. And uh, today we are here back for another um, final entry in our Between the Frames series. Because for the last 13 episodes, 13 videos, we've been covering the essential Fellini box set from Criterion Collection. This huge thing. And we're done. We're done. We're done with it. I mean, at least when it comes to the uh, feature films, we're done. Because I'm not covering the Marcello Mastroianni, I remember, uh, documentary. But we are done. Today we are going to be covering and talking about his 1987 film, Inter Vista. And uh, yes, it is the final entry here. And we're talking about this movie and a uh, movie I had never seen before. Uh, this is his penultimate film, meaning that this is his second to last film. Uh, after this one would be, of course, his last final film before he would die, The Voice of the Moon. But uh, today we're talking about his penultimate movie. And uh, it's been a really fun journey, my friends, being able to talk about this wonderful set. Uh, very, very special set. I'm going to pretty much actually try to complete the set now when I'm done with these videos because I get to watch the supplements and I get to watch the documentary that's in there. And But um, Criterion has really made an incredible set and possibly one of my favorite, uh, what's it called, uh, releases from Criterion because it's... It's worth every single penny. It's so many great movies, great restoration processes, great films and and uh, great um, subjects that they cover. And of course, just magnificent cinema from Federico Fellini. So uh, once again, just props to Criterion. They have done an incredible job with this. And you know, of course, packaging was just amazing. You know, this is this is truly some of the best work from Criterion. But, of course, uh, Intervista, we're here for it. We're here. Let's go ahead and just talk about it, right? Um, let me go ahead and read the wonderful entry from Criterion.com on this movie. And let's go ahead for the last time, at least when it comes to Federico Fellini's films, from this set, let's read about 1987's Intervista. Something of a late career companion to Eight and a Half. Federico Fellini's penultimate film is a, similar, it's a similarly self-reflexive and self-deprecating journey through both the director's dream life and his cinematic world, which are here as always in Fellini's work, inextricably entwined. In Rome, to make a documentary about the great filmmaker, a Japanese camera crew follows Fellini on a tour through his longtime home studio of Chinachita as the maestro's memories and fantasies unfurl in a dizzying, dazzling, time-bending love letter to the art and spectacle of movie making. The film's spra uh, sprawling vision even makes room for an appearance by Marcello Mastroianni and Anita Ekberg, who in an unforgettable bit of movie magic relive their iconic Trevi fountain scene from La Dolce Vita lent new poignancy by the tacit acknowledgement of time's passing. Of course, that is uh, Intervista written by Federico Fellini and Gianfranco Angelucci and directed by, of course, Federico Fellini. And it was produced by Ibrahim Musa, Pietro Na Na Natura Natroiani. Of course, stars Anita Ekberg, Marcello Mastroianni, Federico Fellini and Sergio Rubini. Uh, cinematography is done by Tonino Delicoli and the music is done by Nicola, uh, Nicola, Nicola Piovani who was the one he worked with of course after uh, Nino Rota's uh, sad death and um, yeah this movie came out in 1987 premiered at the Cannes Film Festival and uh, it is actually one of Federico Fellini's shortest films coming in at a nice an hour and 45 minutes so um not that long like his other movies, but it sure is a beautiful, beautiful movie. This could not be the most poetic movie to end the set on and really be the last one that you look at. Uh, this truly is Federico's um, love letter to Chinechita. This is his love letter to filmmaking, 
this is his love letter to the sets, the wardrobes, the costumes of Chinachita. And like a lot of his other movies, like Ro Roma, like Eight and a Half, you know, these are self, very self-reflective and um, they have a beautiful job of displaying that beautiful message that Federico is kind of showcasing and how like the older he gets, the more he tends to like fear the idea of losing not just himself, but cinema in general and not knowing what he's going to leave for the world after his passing. Um, I had never seen the movie. I only had seen one little clip uh, because the incredible, um, uh, the incredible Alessandro Carrera showed us a clip from this film. Um, and it was the, of course, the scene with uh, Marcello and Anita Ekberg as they watched their uh, scene from the fountain in, in La Dolce Vita, which is probably one of the most beautiful uh, scenes in this movie and probably one of the most beautiful scenes in any of Federico Fellini's films. And now being able to watch it with the proper translation because the video that I watched, the clip I watched was in French subtitles and I don't read French. So being able to finally watch it here and being able to ju not just digest, but really consume the feelings of, you know, time passing and not being the you know, Belladonna of that time and being, you know, the incredible movie star anymore, you know, you, you finally get to watch really how much time has passed within the realm of cinema, but also in the realm of life. And um, the performances are wonderful. And it, this is, this, it, this isn't, you know, the most top tier Fellini, right? This isn't like in the half, this isn't Amarcor, this isn't uh, La Dolce Vita but it's very special. And I think that's a lot of what you get from late Fellini after you go from Amarcord is that, you know, the films don't really feel like they're on par with everything that came before, but they still feel very special. They feel very important within the filmography of Federico Fellini. And uh, I think that this one is one that kind of snuck its way into my heart a lot because uh, as I kept watching, I kept getting very emotional seeing some of these scenes that were being replayed and you know, being brought out from Federico's life as he was, you know, touring Chinichita as a, as a young filmmaker and, you know, being able to recreate that himself with, with the actor on the, in the film, I thought that, you know, it, it worked so well to create this beautiful, timeless tale of time's passing. And, uh, yeah, I really like this movie and I think that it's a beautiful one to, to kind of uh, cap this uh, set with its, its beautiful art and its beautiful cinema. Now, let's talk about the transfer. This is a 4K digital restoration. And by God, they ended it with possibly one of the best transfers on this, on this set. This set, this transfer, this restoration looks amazing. Vivid colors, the colors pop on the screen. Skin tones finally look accurate. Let's be honest, you know, because in that video, I, in the last in the last transfer, you know, it looked very like the skin looked very yellow on Anita Egberg and on Marcello, and you know, they're they're very, they're they're of course white 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 people. They don't they don't look like that. You know, the skin doesn't look like that unless you have like liver problems, right? You know, and on here you finally have accurate skin tones. The the nature looks so beautiful, and you know, in that stunning, beautiful 4K digital restorations that was done for this movie. Everything looks great. The audio is, is beautifully crisp and easy to listen to. And uh, the score, of course, sounds great. It's, it's another great score in the films of Federico Fellini. I don't think, you know, Federico ever, you know, had a bad score. I don't, I don't think his movies ever had a bad score. I think they're, the music was always beautifully, you know, a company uh, beautifully accompanies the, the the film and the visual language of the movie and uh it's beautifully restored in this film and uh yeah everything looks wonderful honestly it, it it's just it's it's amazing what they did on these color films compared to you know the black and whites because of course the black and whites you can tell a big difference but on these color films you really 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 can tell how um much work was put into them because they're massively different from the last restorations that were done on the film but uh yeah 
I really like this movie and I want to go ahead and just finally give my thoughts that on this set. It's just amazing. I want to just finish up by saying that if you have not bought this set and you are interested and you've been watching all these reviews that I've been doing, I uh, hope I've convinced you to pick this up on the next sale because, the, of course, it is way too expensive right now. Uh, my friend Luis bought this for me. I don't think he should have bought it at 200 He should have you know, waited for the sale. But... Um, you know, he bought it for 200 and I really do appreciate him for that because this set is amazing and um, I, it, you know, it was a no-brainer that this would be the first set that we were going to cover on the, uh, on the channel. But um, I love this set and if you are looking to pick this up, of course, Barnes & Noble has a sale two times this year on the year. Of course, it is in uh, July, in June and in uh, November. But, you know, the Criterion, the Criterion uh, collection has sales every now and then, 50% off, flash sales, and you can pick this up for half off when those sales happen. So get, pick this up. This is an incredible set, not just for fans of cinema, but just collectors all around. This, these have, these is 100% worth the money. And um, I want to go ahead and give you all a updated, um, <clears throat> an updated, um, ranking of the films uh from Federico Fellini now that I finally um was able to finish the set and watch everything from 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 uh from the set now I have like 16 films I've seen from this man but uh yeah uh let me go ahead and do that before I talk to you all about the next set that we are covering here on between the frames and if you already have followed me on Twitter then you probably already know which one it is because I ran a Twitter poll but First, let's look at these films from Federico Fellini and where they rank. So all the way down and so, so here's my ranking. All the way down at number 15, we have the first film in this set, uh, The White. Oh no, not that's not the first one. It's like the second one, I think. Uh, the White Sheik. After that, you have a short film, uh, Toby Dammit. And then you have at number 13, you have Satyricon. At number 12, you have And the Ship Sails On. At number 11, you have Variety Lights. At number 10, you have Ivitiloni. At number 9, you have Intervista. At number 8, you have uh, Il Bidone. At number 7, you have Julia the Spirits. At number 5, you have La Strada. At number 4 is Fellini's Roma. At number... I'm sorry, number 5 is Fellini's Roma. Number 4 is La Dolce Vita. Number 3 is Amarcord. Number 2 is Nights of Cabiria, and of course at number one, my favorite movie from Federico Fellini, one of my favorite movies of all time, Eight and a Half. And uh, that's my updated uh, ranking there. And of course, to keep up with that and all the wonderful stuff that I talk about with films, you can always go ahead and follow me on Letterboxd. I'm under there as the Nerdy Chicano. But let's go ahead and do this. What is the, what is the next set that we are going to be talking about here on Between the Frames. That is none other than one of my favorite sets from last year, one of my favorite releases from Criterion last year, none other than World of Juan Carwai. We will be looking at the, I believe it's six films in here, or seven, I'm not sure, um, but it is a good amount of movies, uh, not a huge set like the Federico Fellini set, but uh, of course you're thinking, Raul, you already did one of these. You, you did a whole stream where you did a retrospective on the set and you talked about it. I know, I did, but I felt that I could still go a little deeper. And I think I could, you know, just, you know, dig in a little bit more into this set and talk more about not just the restorations, but, you know, what exactly the films are trying to say and, and you know, exactly where we, where we go here. But uh, I love this, mo these, this set and I can't wait to talk about it again. And, uh, yes, we are going to be starting off next week with the first film in this set for 1988, As Tears Go By. And then from there, we will continue on our way to complete this set. And then I will let you know what's the next set. But um, uh, in the meantime... It has been a wonderful time, my friends. I really did enjoy doing this journey through the Central Fellini set from Criterion Collection. And, of course, if you want to stay up to date with all the things I do and want to go ahead and interact with me, as always, I'm under Twitter and Instagram as the Nerdy Chicano, the Nerdy Chicano, and on Letterboxd at the Nerdy Chicano as well. And I'm also on the Twitch, on twitch.tv slash the Nerdy Chicano. 
award season is starting up, so Energy Gone Alive will be starting up soon again. We're going to be talking a lot about these, you know, nominees and award shows. And we're going to be talking about, you know, what's going on in the world of the awards race as we, you know, keep our trajectory on the 2022 Oscars this year. Um, of course, it would be a pleasure if you all go ahead and drop a like on the video, but also, you know, you subscribe and, you know, all that wonderful stuff, like turn on the notification bell so you can get a notification every single time these videos go up. And uh, I did recently just put up some new videos. I did put up my Black Friday haul where I showed up everything, showed off everything I bought on Black Friday last year that was very late. And I mean, we'll be having a new uh, collection update video once I get these next two orders in that I have for the month of January. But uh, other than that, my friends, it's been a wonderful time. And uh, as always, keep up to date with all the things I do on the NerdCore as going to the NerdCore.com and check out all those podcasts, all those written reviews. I'm going to be covering the Sundance Film Festival from January 20th to the 30th. So make sure you keep an eye on all that stuff so you can go ahead and look at all the reviews I put up from Sundance Film Festival. But without a further ado, I don't have an outro. I just let you all know. I, let, I just let you all. I just let y'all wonderful scholars and wonderful renowned cinephiles to relish in the love of cinema. And I'll catch you all on the next one as we look at As Tears Go By. Goodbye. <laughs>